Hi, my name is Laya and I'm 13 years old. Today, um, I'm going to be sharing with you a craft and reading a story for Black History Month. So Black History Month is in February of every year and every Black History Month, we honor and celebrate important figures who are from African-American descent in American history. So I'm gonna be reading these two books. One is called Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History and the other one is Little Legends, Exceptional Men in Black History. Both of these books are written by Vashti Harrison. So while there are several important men and women in both of these books, I'm gonna be focusing on one man and one woman, starting with Ruby Bridges. So I'll be starting with Ruby Bridges. Ruby made history in 1960. When at the age of six, she became the first student to attend an all-white school in New Orleans. Although some cities had already begun to desegregate, as was the law since the Supreme Court ruling in 1954 declared that separate but equal was in fact not equal. There were some cities where schools were still divided by color. But after an important ruling, the court ordered the schools in New Orleans to be desegregated, and Ruby was selected to be the first black student to attend William Grant's elementary school. Every step of the way was a challenge. Long before her first day, Ruby had to take an exam even to gain admission to the school, one that was written in such a way that Black students were less likely to pass. Her father feared what it might mean if she passed, but her mother pushed for Ruby to take it for the sake of a better education. Many people did not support desegregation, and on Ruby's first day, protesters surrounded the school. Ruby had to be ex escorted by her mother in U.S. Marshals in order to enter. She was so young, it was hard for her to grasp what was going on. Many years later, she said that she thought it was a Mardi Gras celebration because of the number of people out on the streets. She had no idea that they were protesting her. When she was inside the school, the difficulties continued. White parents pulled their kids from classes and many of the teachers refused to teach a black student. Only one person agreed to teach her, a young woman who had recently moved to, Lu to Louisiana from Boston. Miss Henry became Ruby's only confidant and friend. During the fight for civil rights, Ruby became a symbol for the vulnerability all Black Americans face. Ruby Bridges is still alive today, and she's about the same age as my grandfather. The next person I'll be talking about is John Lewis. People always knew John was meant to be a leader. When he was young, he dreamed of being a minister. Dressed in a shirt and tie, he preached to chickens on his family farm. Even at home though, he was aware of discrimination in segregated Alabama. Nicer schools, libraries, and buses were reserved for white people. John thought this was unfair. His parents told him to leave it alone, but he wanted to make things better. At around the age of 15, John heard Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on the radio describing how nonviolent protests such as marches and boycotts were helping to end segregation. John was inspired and attended his first march. In college, he wrote to Dr. King asking for advice on how to do more. Amazingly, Dr. King wrote him back, met with him, and soon became a friend and mentor. John organized sit-ins and participated in freedom rides where young black and white activists would sit together in segregated diners and buses. By the age of 23, John was one of the big six civil rights leaders who worked with Dr. King and one other to organize the 1963 March on Washington for jobs and freedom. In 1965, John and 600 others planned to march from Selma to Montgomery in Alabama. When they crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge, state troopers were waiting for them. The troopers attacked the protesters, injuring many, including John, whose school was fractured. The images from the march of peaceful protesters being beaten made it onto national news. Americans were horrified, and this, was, and this led to a wave of support for civil rights. Over the years, John has received many honors for fighting for the rights of his fellow Americans, and he's still using nonviolence. He has held a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives, serving Atlanta's 5th District since 1987. 
In 2016, he led a sit-in at the U.S. Capitol to push for gun control laws. As a boy, John wanted to change the world, and as a man, he keeps changing it. He recently passed away in 2020 at age 80. However, his legacy still lives on today. Like the story said, John Lewis was close to Martin Luther King Jr. So today we'll be doing a craft on Martin Luther King. So in order to complete this craft, you will need a pair of scissors, an index card, white construction paper, any color rectangular construction paper, glue, markers, pens, and pencils, and brown construction paper. Unfortunately, I didn't have any brown construction paper, so I'm just gonna use a brown paper bag. For this craft, there are three major steps. One, you're gonna cut an oval out of this brown construction paper and glue it onto your large construction paper. Second thing you're gonna do is take your white paper, draw eyes, and cut it out onto the brown oval. The third thing you're gonna do is take your index card and make it into a speech bubble by cutting it out. And that's our craft. So in the space over here, you can write any dreams that you have for your family, friends, or community. Thank you.